merry, happy, happy, merry, joyous, Feliz Navidad, everybody. It is the 2000th annual Comedy Spot Holiday Show, live here at the Comedy Spot stage. We wish you were here. Joining me, co-hosting, ladies and gentlemen, your friend, my friend, Chris Emery. Hi, Greg. Thank you so much. I'm super excited. This is our annual uh, Sacramento Comedy Spot Holiday Show. Uh, it's done a little differently this year. Right? Yeah, uh, tell the people a little bit how we've done it in the past. So in the past, the, the, the holiday show has been a variety show. And the variety has been broad. Uh, with comedy, sketch, improv, video, stand-up, lots of music, lots of merriment, lots of drinking. Uh, there's going to be comedy. There's going to be music. There's going to be drinking. It's just going to be a little... Uh, yeah. Oh, by the way, yeah. In fact, uh, uh, Greg has supplied us with some hard nog. We'll be drinking nog throughout the show. I'll be uh, really guiding Chris down an avenue of nog knowledge that uh, he doesn't currently have. I consider myself uh, a bit of a nog sommelier. Uh, <laughs> right now we're drinking uh, one of the finest, Sacramento's finest. This is Gunther's. Gunther's egg. Gunther's. Nog. I only know them for their ice cream. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that they also make you drunk. Yep. Uh, well, I added the booze. Oh, okay. Got yeah. you. Right. I was going to say, this, <laughs> it, it was very um, pungent. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of booze in this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Gunther's really goes for it. Yeah. But that's, that's a heavy-handed pour from uh, Sabin. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's got, it's got notes of dairy, of course, a little sugar, a little egg, a little Christmas cheer, a little Rankin and Bass on the palate and the finish. <laughs> so uh, we'll be walking through some other very fine, and including some homemade nogs. For you out there. So if you got a little nog at home. And speaking of Rankin and Bass, mm. uh, I'm very excited to announce that um, uh, tonight we are going to premiere for the very first time the Sacramento Comedy Spot stop motion animated holiday special yeah. that I have been working tirelessly on. Uh, it's stop motion is it's a grand endeavor, but I've uh, blood, sweat, and tears have gone into this. I've uh, you know, put aside relationships and my work, my actual work that pays me, uh -huh. in order to uh, make this thing super special for you all. Because what says holidays like some stop motion? We got Rudolph, Santa right. Claus is coming to town, some classics out there. So. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, not to, not not to poo-poo on the party. Uh, I know that stop motion takes a lot of expertise and work and a huge number of people. And you've done this solo, solo, all, and this you've alone. never done this before, never before. No, but I watched some YouTube videos, and in this day and age, you watch a couple of YouTube videos, all of a sudden, you're an expert in whatever it is. Great. Well, can't wait. I can't wait either. And um, we need to uh, take some time here to introduce our tech, our man um, uh, among men, mm -hmm. our uh, very special Brian Crawl is here on the Hi. ones and twos. What's going on, guys? It's nice to see you. Hi. It's uh, good to see you. Yeah. Brian, thank you so much. You have, uh, I've been working tirelessly on this stop motion. You have been working tirelessly on making sure that this show is super tech heavy, mm -hmm. but smooth and beautiful. And I know it's been stressful for you. You threw a pen earlier. Mm -hmm. It was a real diva move, yep. but we forgive you for it. It's all right. I picked up my pen. <laughs> I picked up my paper and my pen. Whatever. Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, thank you for all the comments, by the way. I really appreciate it. I'm going to show them underneath Greg and Chris as the show goes along. And if they can see the screen, they'll uh, give you a shout out and everything. But thank you for being here. Uh, I'm so excited. Chris and Greg have done such a great job putting this together. So uh, thank you both. It's going to be a fun show. Oh, it's going it's to be a great show. We've got some recorded videos. We've got some longtime favorites. We've got some live simulcasts. We've got some special satellite technology we're going to be using tonight. So we are stretching our technical knowledge really past its, uh, past its end. Yeah. And uh, speaking of, let's dive right into our first... A uh, bit, if you will. Yeah. Uh, we have we solicited a couple of our community comedians, our local stand-up comedians, to uh, put together a couple of holiday movie reviews. So let's dive into our first one. Our own Melissa McGillicuddy has put together her own holiday movie review. Take it away, Melissa. Hello, Sacramento Comedy Spot. How is it going? Uh, local queer median. Melissa McGillicuddy here, just checking in, wanted to say hi, wish you all um, a happy holiday, and I hope that 2021 is better for you than the literal dumpster fire 
that has been most of 2020. Um, I wanted to check in real quick, just tell you about um, a fun holiday film that I watched recently. It was called The Happiest Season. A classic, classic. I mean, it just came out this year, um, but it's, it's fast-tracking its way to be an instant classic. Um, look, there's a lot that I wanted to like about the movie. Um, it's got a great lineup. Um, it's got Kristen Stewart. A, a great lineup? I don't know. Why am I describing this like it's a stand-up comedy show? No, this is a, this is a movie with actors. This is a great cast, all right? It's got Kristen Stewart, What's Not to Love, um, Aubrey Plaza, and Dan Levy, a.k.a. David from Schitt's Creek. So I don't want to give the whole movie away, but I'll just real briefly provide a, a high-level synopsis of the film. So basically, um, what had happened is is uh, Bella is all grown up, and um, she's turns out she's not a vampire anymore, but she is still in an abusive relationship. Um, this time it's with a woman. Bella, we knew it. We all knew it. You're always the last one to know. Am I right? So... The, the hot plot point of this film is that um, Bella is going to meet her girlfriend's family for the very first time. Girlfriend's mom and dad. Except the mom and dad don't know that their daughter is seconds gay. On this. And what ensues um, can only be described as the film equivalent of 2020. <laughs> but I highly recommend that you all watch it. It's a great film. Um, and thank you so much, Comedy Spot, for having me. I look forward to seeing all of you in person. Um, sometime in 2023, give or take a year or two. Um, thank you all so much. Have a great night. Happy holidays. Bye. Melissa, thank you. <laughs> Melissa, thank you so much. That was fantastic. We uh, did not know that when we uh, asked her to review a movie, um, the concept of a movie was not really, uh, was going to be on the table. I, I did not know that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was excited to see this, though. I don't yeah. know if I'm going to watch it based off of that review, but um, <laughs> I might watch it anyway. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's the first of many, or several, or... A few movie reviews. Yeah, there's three total. Three. Okay, so three. there's two more. <laughs> Several is three. Yeah. There's 20 movie reviews. <laughs> it's exactly. mostly movie reviews tonight. <laughs> yes. Uh, we've got about 8,000 hours worth of material. So mm -hmm. uh, I hope you've worn your special underwear. Okay. Uh, our next, uh, we're going to be throwing this over to some very, very good friends of mine. Uh, uh, mentors, friends, people that I love, uh, uh, family. Uh, these two, husband and wife, have been performing at the holiday show at the Comedy Spot for years. And every year, the crowds get bigger, the crowds get louder, they chant for them. It's, 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 it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely amazing. Um, they're live streaming right now from their home studio. I'm going to throw it over to my good friends, Bill Dendel and Shelly Burns. Hey, thanks, Greg. It's uh, Bill and Shelly here at home uh, in my office, celebrating Christmas as we always do. It's always an office Christmas for us. <laughs> wow. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, we're really grateful to be uh, invited back to participate in the Comedy Spot Christmas show. It's a thing we look forward to all year. It would be better if we practiced also, but what the heck. We're gonna go through some of our, uh, our favorites. And we're gonna start with one that celebrates Christmas, a, a little known tale of Christmas that comes to us from the noted authority Laverne and Shirley. Uh, Lenny and Squiggy sang this song back in the early 70s, and it goes like this. It was Christmas Eve night at the courthouse, and all of the paupers were there. I stepped in because it was snowy, and snow always fucks up my hair. By the pot-bellied stove, said a pot-bellied man. He spoke with some lumps in his throat. His story was sad, and his diction was bad. And here is a song that he wrote. Oh, I once was the jolliest fat man. With roses in all of my cheeks. I'd load up my sled every Christmas and go on a drunk for two weeks. My friends said they saw me on rooftops 
sliding down chimneys of dawn. With my reindeer in hand, I'd glide across the land and wake up on somebody's lawn. One morning, my wife left this message. Each Christmas I've spent by myself, I'm sick of your stupid tradition. So I've run off to Spain with an elf. Just then the old man started dying. He cried, may the Lord take my soul. We went through his wallet to see who he was. His address said simply, North Pole. So the next time you go by the poorhouse, if by the poorhouse you go, just take off your hat to a dead guy who's fat and whisper a quiet ho ho. A little lone Christmas tale. Uh, we're going to move on now to uh, a very traditional Christmas carol. Uh, we've been doing it for years. A lot of people don't realize that Christmas is celebrated traditionally in Jamaica as well. And they have a rich tradition, a culture built around music. Really? Yes, and this song, many people don't realize, actually came to us from Jamaica. Really? Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. From Jamaica, yes. Uh, that was actually written by Eartha Kitt, who was half Jamaican, who spent uh, quite a bit of her life, many people don't realize this, not far from here, out on the coast, in a beautiful little town called San Tababy. Did you know that? No. No. Well, that's the truth. And uh, now we're going to do an original composition. It occurred to me that Christmas is not the fondest memory that some people have. I'm one of them. I, I Christmas was not something that I enjoyed when I was a kid. Oh, I should stop laughing now. You should. <laughs> Christmas songs are mostly about fond memories and childhood and stuff. Well, I didn't have a good time with Christmas. It was not a fun thing. Yes, I know. Uh, so I wrote a song about it for people who didn't have fond memories of Christmas. Uh, give you an example of a Christmas memory. When I was eight years old, my parents didn't have a lot of money to spend that year. And they came to me and they said, what do you want for Christmas? And I said, I want to watch. And they let me. No. It wasn't good. No. <laughs> no. My halls were never decked with boughs of holly. <laughs> I've never been home for Christmas. I've never watched out. I've never not cried. I've never had a merry little Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard any jingle bells. Nor danced in the snow on a one-horse open sleigh. I've never seen Mommy kissing Santa Claus. I've never heard the bells on Christmas Day. I've never rocked around a Christmas tree. Or gone to a Christmas party hop. I've had no holly jolly Christmases. In fact, they've all been awful luck. So fuck you, Christmas. Fuck you, Christmas. I don't give a shit about the gifts or the cards. I don't need a tree. 
and I don't want to wait. So fuck you, Christmas. Fa la 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 la. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you. You can have a kiss. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Bill Dendel and Shelley Burns. Thank you so much oh. for gracing us this year. That was oh, the light of my season, uh, really, for the kids. You know, that's 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 their kids' act. If if you haven't seen them uh, do their adult show, you should just whew, it gets it gets pretty uh, pretty out there. I tell you, I tell you. How, now you've seen uh, Bill and Shelley before, haven't you, Chris? Yeah, I've seen them live, Ugh. and they are amazing live. But this was uh, just as amazing for me to watch them. Yeah. It reminded me of of the sweet good times. The so sweet. sweet good times. So it's hilarious, dude. It always gets me when they say "fuck Christmas." <laughs> <laughs> Never gets old. It's amazing. <clears throat> well, it's one of our oldest traditions uh, to say "fuck you, Christmas," <laughs> and. Uh, Along those lines, uh, we've got our favorite Jew coming up next. And um, now, Brian, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you come on camera a little bit to to kind of talk, help me talk this up because this video uh, we've we shot several years ago. Um, you shot several years ago. Let me get this straight. You shot several years ago, right? That, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, um, uh, we brought Mel over to our house. Uh, we got her extremely drunk. And then we asked her to tell us the story of Hanukkah, oh. and uh, and she did. Yeah. Okay. So Mel Gelbart, everybody. Mel Gelbart, which is I don't know about you, my favorite Jew. <laughs> She's one of my favorite people, regardless <laughs> of her denomination. Okay, fair. Are, are we allowed to say Jew? <laughs> I don't think so. Are you? Oh, oh, are you not? I don't. I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I won't say that anymore. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know. You learn something every year. That's my, that's my learning. Okay, great. Uh, so here is uh, basically uh, Mel Gelbart, one of my favorite people. Yes. Great. Okay. Of? No, just people. <laughs> she's okay. Hilarious, right. and yes. she also she doesn't drink very often. That's so take true. that into context. Yes. So um, this is a this is a once. This probably happens five times out of her lifetime. She's gotten this drunk before. Got it. And she went ahead and she did something special for us. Yeah, and, and this was only three glasses of wine, and she was snarking. <laughs> so it was bad. It was really bad. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mel Gelbart explains Hanukkah. My name is Mel Gelbart, and I'm going to be telling you the story of Hanukkah. Hanukkah, actually, technically, Hanukkah is the festival of lights. The story of Hanukkah takes, oh, oh, it takes place in BC because of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> us or if it's everybody else. People are always being so mean to the Jews. Maybe we provoke them. I don't know. And so, I don't know. I think it was like Greeks. It could have been Romans. Everybody hates the Jews. Anyway, so the Greeks came in and they were like, get out and don't be Jewy. Like, don't do Jew stuff and don't get Jew married and don't celebrate Jew things. And the Jews were like, no, we're going to Jew it up. And so, they decided to fight back against the Greeks. But apparently, because like we have magical powers, because God helps us a lot, <laughs> it was like one family, but they must have had, a, maybe they had a lot of brothers and sisters. There was no birth control. And so the Maccabees came along, but there was like one super Maccabee. And the super Maccabee, <laughs> the super Maccabee, I don't know. So the Super Maccabee is like the Hulk Maccabee. His name's Judah Maccabee, which seems weird because Judas was bad, I think, in the next book. But Judah was okay. And he was a Super Maccabee. And he kind of like fought everybody. So the Judah and all his brothers and their dad. I don't remember what the dad's name was. I don't think that was important when I was a kid. It was, he had a name. I'm sure he had a name. Let's call him Netanyahu. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, let's call him Netanyahu because that's a president now and that makes sense. They fought the Greeks and they, they ran them out of town. But the ones that didn't get run out of town got killed. <laughs> so there was dead Greeks everywhere. And so they had to clean up the mess. And so they, um, I don't know, they Swiffered that shit away. <laughs> so they Swiffer sweeped him away and roomba him away. It seems like we're always getting into fights and we always win, but I think it's because we're telling the story so it's always a little skewed. Like, it wouldn't be good to tell your people a story where you lost. That'd be sad. So we won, and then we threw a party, but, oh my god, you can't throw a party in the dark. This is the kicker. This is where things get menorah-y. I'm not sure exactly, but my memory says that they sent some kid because you can tell kids what to do, you boss them around. And they said some kids said, go get oil so we can throw a party and light our lanterns. Whatever, you put oil in, I don't know. They sent the kid, did they wait in the dark? <laughs> Guess the juice out in the dark for a couple days. <laughs> I don't know what they did before they got the oil came back to them. I guess they sat. The kid went and everybody waited because why would you send everybody to get oil? I mean, how many people does it take to carry oil like a person? Then the guy comes back, but oh my God, maybe they didn't give him enough money or something. His shoes are so cheap or cheap. <laughs> so he just had a little bit of oil. And there's, here's the fucking miracle shit. They want to light their menorah and they only have enough oil to light for one day. But holy fuck balls, it lasts for eight as Adam Sandler says, crazy nights. <laughs> so they had eight days of oil and it was a miracle. So we celebrate that not only two things, the Maccabees won to go over the Greek fuckers and the oil lasted. And so now we celebrate with a menorah and we eat food cooked in oil because that's the closest connection to oil we can get. So we eat like donuts and fried potatoes called latkes. And we play dreidel and we do presents. But I think the presents thing is more of a Christmas thing. I think we were just jealous of Christmas. So we add that later. And so that, that children is a story. I was gonna say the celebration. That, that children is a story of Judah and the Maccabees, and the story of Hanukkah. You're welcome. Merry Christmas! I don't know how to play dreidel, I, I figured out. I was talking to my dad today, and I, I made up all my own rules, apparently. I have a little dreidel. I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and dry, and dry it's not dirty. Oh, dreidel. Oh, boy. <laughs> Holy crap. I, I've seen that I, like almost every year, right? And I still friggin' crack up about that oh, every yeah. single time. It's amazing. And so, it's, it's so educational. I think oh, yeah. that's what all the commenters at home were like really involved in the history. <laughs> the, 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 she was really doing a good job. Totally, totally. Uh, Mel lays out all the facts you need to know, really cuts through kind of the extraneous information there and uh, offers it in a, again, family-friendly uh, you know, dialogue. Yeah, of education. Perfect. Sorry, I was just, I was solely focused on Chris that entire time you were talking. Uh, no problem. Here, I'll go back I was, do, I was doing hey! a good job of, though, like, keeping entertaining. Like, uh -huh. oh, yeah. yeah. React. React. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I want to shout out real quick. Um, we right now have, uh, we, at one point, we had 102, 103, thanks, Brian, 103 viewers. Uh, breaking records here at the Sacramento mm -hmm. Comedy Spot for our mm -hmm. streaming. It's that's a lot more than having 12 people watching <laughs> yeah. on a regular basis. So we appreciate you at home and all your comments. Thank you so much. Uh, we're feeling the love here in the studio, and I hope that you're feeling the love there at home. <laughs> Can you feel the love tonight? Yes. <laughs> yes, I feel the love. Tonight. It's fantastic. It's so great to see so many friends out there that are commenting and 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 chiming in. I hope you've got a warm child or pet next to you to keep you warm, or, or a fire, and uh, you know you got you got some alcohol. Or if you're not into the alcohol thing, then you've got maybe some some non-alcoholic nog. And if you're dairy free, there's there's soy nog. Yeah. Uh, just nog your way through tonight. I mean, you know, nog out with your log out. That's the way I say it. So, <laughs> yes. so I hope you're doing well. Yes. Um, we okay. Let's move on. We've had a lot of 
wonderful musicians already. Yeah. Um, and we have another musician joining us mm. uh, live that we get to talk to and, and interact with. Um, and um, this is one of the Comedy Spot uh, favorites. Okay. True. Um, let's welcome and bring on Leon. Mm. Hey, happy holidays, Chris and Greg. Hey, Leon, happy hey. holidays. You got your nog? You're rocking out nice. with your nog and your log? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm always rocking out with my nog out, as everyone knows. How you guys doing? Amazingly. Yeah. <laughs> Things yeah. are going very well. I, I love your festive hat, and it looks like that you dyed your, your beard uh, Santa Claus white mm -hmm. in my... Is this true? I'm just I'm just getting older, Chris. <laughs> okay, sorry. How sorry. rude. You know, the pandemic has been a hard time for Leon. I can't perform in front of live audiences anymore. Right, right. No, 2020 has taken its toll on everybody. If uh, you have any uh, musicians in your family, uh, give them three times the presents this year. Cause, uh, or just cash. Cash actually would be best. Booze, alcohol, those things. Please, please, please. Drugs. Mm -hmm. Or drugs. Yes, yes. <laughs> Leon, I know that uh, a lot of your music has been fueled by some of your like raging drug infested nights. Is this correct? That is, that is very correct. Like every good musician, I fuel off of that. Uh, but before I get going, I just want to say thank you, Chris and Greg, for this present. Well, I mean, a little something. Just it's the least something. we could do. You do so much for our community. We should be able to give you a little gift if we need to. Okay, wow, it's a, it's a perfect shape, my, one of my favorite shapes. Uh, so I'm gonna open it here in front of everyone if that's okay. Sure, mm -hmm. oh, of course, yes, of course. Great. It's that's made great. to be inserted, just so you know. Oh, okay, all right, mm -hmm. all right. Oh, this is a lot of wrapping paper here. Yeah. Wrapping, wrapping and unwrapping makes for good video. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one lesson we've learned. Mm -hmm. Oh, how did you know? Oh. Yeah, it's a brand new recorder. Oh, mm -hmm. oh my God. Yeah, yeah, brand new. Oh uh, my God, two -tone. thank you. And it, it fits, it fits. I think that was our part, it was like, yeah. is it gonna fit or is not? Is it gonna fit Leon's mouth? It fits. It's really it the does, first question we asked. It does, Well, you know, I'm gonna use this, this present uh, to the best of my ability, because if you've never met me before, my name is Leon, and I'm a professional recorder player. If you see me around town, I'm the sexiest, smoothest recorder player around town. And tonight, specifically for the holiday show, I have composed a song specifically for tonight. All right? Ooh, just for tonight. Just well, thank for you. tonight. That's great. I like originals. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, are y'all ready? Yeah. Yeah, please. Oh yeah. All right. Merry Christmas. It was nice. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank you very much. It was nice. You played it with passion. Smooth. Uh, you said it was original. That I had a familiar, uh, a familiar tune to it. It did a little bit. Just like Christmas spirit was the tune. Mm, I was thinking more like Christmas hot time, hot cross buns. Hot cross buns. That's, That's what it what is. I That's what it is. It sounds hot similar to. Okay, well, okay, we'll, we'll scratch that. If that sounded way too familiar for you, I created a specific song called uh, Chris and Greg Save Christmas. Oh, oh well, okay. okay, that's what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, please, please, all right. please. You know, all right, we're all Chris here. Chris and Greg right. Save Christmas. Uh, I, I know Chris is a, a singer. Can I get just like a nice, like, Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Chris and Greg save Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Had a, had a um, had a similar vibe, maybe just a a similar groove. 
Yeah, there was the last like one. A holiday, Christmassy groove, right? And we're not we're not trying to like look a gift horse in the mouth. I no. appreciate you taking the time to write us a song. It just sounded very similar to Hot Cross Buns mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Hot, hot Cross Buns, you know, it's a, it's a recording staple, and maybe you can hear it just because you see it, and it's it's kind of like a Mandela effect. Maybe I don't know, but that was an original piece. I've actually been working on that since you've asked me to be on the show a month ago. Okay. So. Yeah, I mean, I did. I liked the, uh, you gave a yeah in there. Right. And that yeah, was the, the yeah different. felt very original and heartfelt mm -hmm. and not at all hot or crossy or bunsy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, well, I do have one more song. Yeah. Yeah. As, as long as it's today. not hot cross buns. Yes. Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. This is for uh, the viewers out watching tonight this especially is for a couple people like uh megan jocelyn michael arosa brian walters as spooky ghost marco cabote jennifer <laughs> stefan leisha young alex shoemaker joe lewis roy underscore donk joshua Pereira. are, are you just going to name everybody that you see on right now Blanson, that's who this is for right now. Got it. Got it. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and Greg, I know you do a good, like, uh, a bird sounds. Can you lay me out a bird, couple of bird sounds real okay. quick? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm hmm. Merry Christmas. Thank you, everyone out there. Scott, Brian Walters, Marco Cabote, Stacey Cochran. Does she not know? I mean, does, does Leon just not know? Is that, is it? Uh, I think Leon is an artist uh, that transcends mm -hmm. ahead of his time even. Okay. So maybe this is, maybe we're not hearing the differences in that. Because Leon, that, I mean, that was hot cross buns. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Well, I went, I went to a famous music school and you did not. So that you know you what you got me there. That's what I'm saying. The nuances. I don't think that we're picking up the nuances. I mean, sounds like she went to like pastry school for for music. That's what I'm getting. Oh, uh, well. the the passion though is there. So you know what, uh, Leon, uh, I'll I'll pick up an album. How much? How much for uh, your holiday classics? Your holiday album. Yes, holiday classics. It's a it's a single. It's twenty dollars. <laughs> It's a single. single. <laughs> it's a single EP on iTunes, $20. Very cheap, very cheap. For one song. Can you, yes. Can you give us a little, a just a little sample? Can you give us a little sample, an outro of, your, of this one song, this single EP that we're paying $20 for? Yes, absolutely. Um, again, this goes out to everyone watching out there. Here we go. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, that's... Thank All right, you. I Leon. almost forgot the, that one tiny piece of the music. <laughs> it was, you know what? You're a master of your craft. Thank you so much for being on our show, for spreading some holiday cheer, and for playing one song for us. Sure, <laughs> seven sure. different times. You know, you when, each his own. <laughs> when uh, hopefully, when uh, we can get together again here at the Comedy Spot, uh, we can see you here on the stage, uh, performing. Hopefully something ever so slightly different. We'll see. Here's to 2021, everyone. <laughs> Speaking Happy of the holidays. stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. You're a treasure, Bye, uh, a national treasure. Uh, speaking of the stage, uh, a lot of people might have noticed who have been here at the Comedy Spot frequently and who have, who have tread these same boards uh, that there's been a little bit of a change in the stage. Yeah, there's, um, we've done some upgrades. Uh, we've changed things around a little bit, and we uh, couldn't have done it without the help of two 
master craftsmen. Just like Jesus Christ was a carpenter, <laughs> yep. so are these sweet, sweet, delicious boys who have helped us out. Yep. Um, and uh, it's Nick George and Joe Lewis, and they've actually gone through and they're going to give a little helpful step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial of what's changed about the stage and how it'll help you when things, thankfully, hopefully, when they come back to normal, how you can enjoy the stage and their hard work. So let's see what they have to say. And action. Oh, hey, oh, hi. Oh, this is embarrassing, uh, didn't see you there. Yeah, you caught us in a bit of work. Oh. Well, uh, I'm Nick George. I'm Joe Lewis. And uh, since you're here, I, we figured we might as well show you a little, uh, Special exclusive sneak peek yeah. of the new uh, comedy spot, Taki Fuego Cheetos Flaming Hot Crunchy stage, brought to you by Taki Fuego Cheetos Flaming Hot Crunchy, uh, where the comedy is always Fuego. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so uh, many of you have already seen little bits and pieces of this new stage versus the new TV. New this, TV. Yeah, it's new. It's the newest thing in this place. A little okay? bit smaller than what was there before, but. There's a second TV if you want to pan all the way over the other side. We'll come over to that side here in a second. We're no longer doing live theater. It's just TV. <laughs> I mean, just now. kidding. <laughs> uh, Joe, why don't you tell uh, the folks at home a little bit about the stage? So the stage might look similar, but it's not. It's safe. Uh, the other thing we've got is a four feet extra this side, four feet extra this side. No longer are you going to be on stage wondering, am I in the scene? Am I a tree? Am I a coat rack? Guess what? Go over there. Back and forth. Back it's and great. Forth. Uh, Brian, can you get in close on this? I brought a little swatch. This is from the, the, the old stage. This is Sherwin-Williams 73 uh, Deep Midnight. And the new stage is Sherwin-Williams number 74. Four. Uh, deeper Midnight. Deeper Midnight. Uh, so completely new look, different shade of black. It's going to give a brand new energy to the folks on stage. Speaking of energy, we've added some power to this stage. Yes. Electrical. 120 volt. 14 gauge Romex everywhere. You can't see it, but it's under there. And it's safe. You want to give them a little demo? Yeah, of course. So, hey man, I'm in an improv scene. Me too, do, I'm do, a doctor. Do, do, what do, seems do. to be the problem? Oh, well the problem is I keep making drinks for everybody. What? Yeah. That seems like you should get that checked out. No, instead, make a blender go and have everybody a drink in this office. Wait, is that a real blender? Yeah, it's a real blender. Hold on, hold on, hey, look at that. It's so invisible, no one can see it. By the way, doctor, what do you want? Uh, I'll Just take a, a smoothie. For five minutes. Okay, I'll plug that, I'll plug that. I'll plug that does not sound good. Oh, God. Cut. Okay, okay. Anyway. Oh, you let the smoke out. No, that's, that's good. <laughs> Look, everybody's reacting to my scene. Okay, and I know what everyone at home is thinking, not that funny. But is it for sale? Yes. <laughs> and we only half committed to the bit, but I will say that if you're over on this side of the stage and you're making a smoothie, but you have a scene partner on the other side of the stage and they want to make a smoothie, well, guess what? Copy and paste. Other, oh. other smoothie area. Smoothie time. Say dry. Uh, we don't need to demo it. It's a smoothie maker. No, we've seen how bad that goes. Also known as a blender. <laughs> um, hey, Joe, tell the folks at home what this button does. I don't, I don't know if we should. I think they're ready for it. Well, we've, we've all been there where our scene's not going well, or yeah. maybe the blender bit didn't go so well. You're drowning. You need an out. You need something to take the attention away from you. All you got to do, boom. Is that... Is that Nickelback? That's right. Your scene saved by Nickelback. Everyone likes that joke. Wait, turn it off. Turn it off. Oh. And is it always the same song? It's always the same song on a loop. Look how safe it is so you don't mess up your scene. That seems like a great addition to the stage. I do. All right, moving on. Let's go backstage <laughs> real quick. Okay. So, uh, we're entering through one of the new wings. We call this the West Wing. Yes. <laughs> um, oh. Hey, man. Little details all over this place. Uh, let's say you're, you got a grumbly and you're tumbly, you're about to go on stage, it's you the musical, you're nervous, you don't know how to sing. Oh man, that's me every day. Well guess what? what? We, got, we got snacks! Oh my god. We got snacks around Finally. every corner! <laughs> Prepared. Alright, let's keep going. Backstage is going to look a lot uh, similar to many of you, although we got, we got rid of the red, everything's gray. Yeah. We also put some reclaimed uh, vintage 
marine shipyard lumber yes. across the top. Every screw is reclaimed from that dock. <laughs> um, what if you get mid-stage backstage and you're hungry? I normally just uh, fight the hunger. Well, now you don't have to. Why? Oh, uh, we got ramen. Oh my god. <laughs> That's great. Solid. <laughs> Hey, what's this? Oh, that's this is called the rule of threes. Oh, more ramen. Oh, uh, all hey, right. You can learn that at a certain type of school. Hey, speaking of learning, oh, Joe, why is there a, a mid-century <laughs> child's desk backstage now? Because sometimes kids can't learn their lines, and you need just five more minutes to study. Oh, so this is for squad patrol? Yeah, for sketches. <laughs> when you're like, man, what's funnier, a Prius or a Yaris? And it's like, I don't know. It's a Yaris. Oh, it's the Y. All right, moving on. <laughs> This is the tech booth. This is for Evan. Pretty much everything's the same here, although, but we've added chains. Yeah, because <laughs> it's not safe enough. So now uh, we don't have to worry about stuff walking off. Yeah, you can't take any of this stuff. Uh, and also, if, if Evan thinks he's going to wander. <laughs> no, he'll be safe and no one will take him. So you just put that around, you lock it, give it a little bit of circulation, and he can roll. He just can't leave. So uh, you're welcome, Evan. Thank you. Uh, oh, one last thing. Um, for those of you that have been backstage, there used to be a door here. There is no longer a door here. We're gonna, we've got some side bets to you see know, who's going gonna to run into this wall first. Just to prove there's not a oh, door. Oh yeah, Joe's on the other side. Joe, are you over there? I'm over here. I'm going to get back here. Yet. Oh no, you can't. Because <laughs> it's, no it's a wall now. <laughs> um, and then finally, let's just, let's just take it all in from, uh, from back on the back wall here. Finally, this is again the new and improved. Comedy Spot stage. Uh, we hope to see you all here very soon. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you can come watch Joe do terrible improv. <laughs> and uh, I think, as they say, uh, that's a wrap. Okay, my favorite Christmas movie, at least as an adult, is This Christmas, for so many reasons. I mean, come on, the cast is incredible. Loretta Devine, Idris Elba, Lauren London, Regina King, it's so good. And also, just like, the drama of it all. Like, that's the only thing about the holidays that I'll constantly remember. Like, mind you, I'm kind of a Scrooge, because like, it's too much. All of it is too much. But what I love is just like the drama of having like all of your siblings coming back home. I mean, I think my one of my favorite like storylines in this film is the fact that one of the sons goes AWOL from the military and gets detained by military police just because he wanted to come home and see his secret wife. Like what more could you want in a Christmas movie? You know, and everybody's attractive and rich. I'm here for it. I love this Christmas. It's just heartwarming and traumatic. And I mean, it comes, it brings us like the best Christmas song that's not all I want for Christmas. I mean, granted it's Chris Brown and like that's problematic, but also who cares, it's catchy. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thank you, Becky Lynn. That was Becky Lynn, the hilarious local comedian, comedian. Uh, she uh, is super funny, and she was gracious enough to uh, give us a review yeah. of this Christmas. Fantastic, fantastic. Big, big thank you, uh, Joe and Nick. Thank you. This stage is amazing. We're standing on the stage right now. It feels solid, very solid, yeah. yet springy. Yeah, and they uh, they donated their time. Oh, so they uh, they are um, gracious and uh, very very um, giving. They gave their time and their their blood, sweat, and tears, and their elbow greases. Yeah, and their um, know how and their both, lumber. I, I would say both are what Mel's people would call a mensch. Yes, and and I wanted to be clear too. Um, it was really important that we did not take any of your donations to be able to build the stage. So the stage was completely paid for by private do donations just to be able to build this. So uh, thank you so much to everybody who has kept us going and being able to pay the bills. I didn't want you to think that we were using your money <laughs> to build a stage. 
this is all private do donations just for this project. So thank you to everybody, and thank you for uh, our folks that uh, uh, came to me and uh, made this thing happen. It's very important to all of us. We can't wait to get back on the stage. Yeah, I want to be very clear. Your very, very generous donations go to make Nog. Most of them really go into the liquor that we are consuming tonight because we are drinking some high-end stuff in these cups. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is Nog number two. Our first one was, of course, by Gunther's. If you're watching, we could use a sponsor. The second Nog is being, uh, it was made by Comedy Spot favorite and uh, performer and lovely person. You will see him behind the bar next year when we uh, uh, reopen again. Mike LaRosa. Mike LaRosa, yes. This is Mike LaRosa's nog. He is a very skilled nog maker. Yes. Uh, yeah, so just take a take a take a smell. Oh, can you can you all hear that at mm -hmm. home? Mm-hmm. You get you yeah, get that's nog. kind of notes of garland, a little little reindeer musk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Taste. Oh yeah, I'm getting a, mm -hmm. a Mariah Carey high C. Yep. <laughs> Uh, right in the in the back of the throat. Yeah, I'm see. I'm getting a little. Maybe it's because I'm older. I'm getting a little Bing Crosby. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Mike, who is happy to share his nog recipes with anybody, uh, put I think some rocket fuel in here and uh, a a good good dollop of sherry. Uh, it's a classy man, Mike Larosa. So, yeah. Very classy. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, tell us about your nog that you're drinking at home. Feel free to share any recipes or favorites that you have, and we will start an entire separate organization cut off from the comedy spot, just selling nog on the holidays uh, out of the back room. And so yeah. that's that's for next year. Yeah. It'll be a, a not for profit nog for profit. Nog for profit. <laughs> nog for profit. Yeah. Yeah. Nog for profit. That's what we'll call it. Anyway, moving on, we have good friends, uh, <laughs> Jake Joyner and Brett Cole, who are both amazing musicians. Jake, unfortunately, moved away uh, several years ago from the Sacramento area and has not graced uh, us on the stage here for several years. They used to be staples of the holiday show. And thanks to uh, digital technology and cameras and satellites and telephones and telegraphs, we are able to live stream in Jake and Brett. They are coming to us live from Jake's grandma's basement. It's going to be a great tune. They're going to play a couple tunes for us. Uh, why don't we throw it over to them? Guys, uh, oh, to you. Hey, Sack Town. What's up, Comedy Spot? Hey, Sack Comedy Mento. It's Brett oh, and Jake. It's Jake and Brett. We're here to sing a Christmas holiday song. Christmas? A holiday. A holiday. A holiday song. Holiday. This one's specifically for people who celebrate Christmas, though. Yeah. So, whatever holiday you're celebrating, listen to this about this holiday. We're not trying to be funny. We're just awkward. Thanks for having us, Greg. <laughs> Mama Cita. Castanets and to his reindeer say I'm Poncho, I'm Blitzen, I'm Pedro, I'm Vixen, Ole, 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 Santa Claus, Namasita, Donde está Santa Claus? Oh. 
hoping to see him in his sleigh. I hope he won't forget to crack his castanet and do his reindeer say. On Pancho, on Blitzen, on Pedro, on Vixen, ole, 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 Santa Claus, mamacita. Donde esta Santa Claus? Oh, where is Santa Claus? And the toys that he will leave. Oh, where is Santa Claus? It's Christmas. Right. Jake and Brett, thank you so much. Uh, that was wonderful. Uh, I'm sitting here and I'm half tearing up because honestly, I really miss uh, being able to do the show live here at the Comedy Spot. The last couple of years we've done the show completely packed, standing room only. Uh, I look forward to that next year for sure. Uh, we have a great segment coming up next. Greg and Chris are taking a break. Greg's changing the shirt. Chris is going to take a massive duty uh, um, <laughs> to, uh, oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of live stream shows lately. Uh, they have been wonderful. I'm so grateful to all of our community who have come up with the shows and participated in and so many, uh, so many of great online episodes to keep our community together, keep everything going. One of those shows that I really enjoy doing every week is the Bad Flick Show, uh, whose producer and uh, host, Alex Shoemaker, has done such a good job of not only bringing together the Comedy Spot community, uh, but also bringing in new people to be part of what we do. Um, so I'm really excited. We decided to do a Bad Flick Show segment tonight. So uh, I'm just gonna bring up Alex here. He's been waiting patiently in the wings. Uh, Alex, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I am doing good. Uh, happy holidays, Brian. Happy holidays. It's nice to see you. Yeah. Thanks uh, for putting together some uh, bad flick show stuff for us. Y yeah, I, I, um, I have a, a clip or two that um, I feel like Christmas past is forgotten. You know, something that we uh, maybe revisit. Maybe might be something to uh, have the our audience members look and uh, just just you know watch it during the holidays. These are these are movies that. Anybody can enjoy, hopefully. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, here, let me bring myself back in. That's oh, yeah. what's <laughs> I, I mean, what's really great is, I, like, my year and, and holiday is always marked by watching some of my favorite films. And what you do is you bring in crappy films. And right. so uh, we are going to watch clips from two cla crappy films. Is that right? Mm -hmm, correct. Uh, two trailers. Two two trailers. Two for, trailers, uh, and you also very interesting film. <laughs> you also brought in some comedy friends that people might know. Uh, they're going to join us here. Here they are. Look, it's yeah. Justine. It's Sam. Hi guys. Hey. Hello. Hello. How are you guys? <laughs> Doing very good. All right. Yeah, I'm drinking my eggnog. <laughs> that looks like beer. <laughs> Is that cider? It's different recipes for different folks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Alex, why don't you do us a favor and go ahead and uh, set up these movies, and then we'll take a look. Absolutely. So the first clip, uh, we, we did show a little bit of it on uh, one of the Bad Flick shows, but I wanted to give you the trailer, give you a little bit more context. Uh, let be your decision to, to watch it. Uh, this is the trailer for the movie A Karate Christmas Miracle. All right, here we go. And action. We're in the four corners. I'm my 12 days of Christmas <laughs> list. Last year, Dad told me that if I did everything on the list, I could have whatever I wanted for Christmas. <laughs> and this year, all I want for Christmas is for Dad to come home. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> man, well, as you know, he just started, and he's yellow belt. But man, he's a quick study. That kid is tough. He got that from his father. The physical oh. toughness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to earn my black belts by Christmas and I have to teach myself. What? J Jesse, a black belt by Christmas? <laughs> and he thinks if he gets a black belt, it'll bring his dad back? I just saw that. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's alive. I need to get that black belt. You know. 
Because I'm having nightmares? Yeah. Yeah. And your kids having nightmares too. Did you know that? <laughs> oh! Whoa, shit, that made took a time. <laughs> we will haunt these victims. Oh my god. You know what he sees? He sees your husband. Your husband, his little daddy, that is gone and disappeared. Getting a black belt is not going to bring back daddy. These are just dreams you're having. <laughs> this movie's terrible! <laughs> maybe, maybe Bob is just trying to reach you and Jesse from some other world or something. You saw Bob here? At your college? Yeah. This is definitely, <laughs> definitely the place. Mom. I have a message for you. I need you to tell me if my husband is alive <laughs> or dead. Dad will be coming home soon where I prove that I earned my black belt. Some is as it seems, some is not. <laughs> that can't be. He disappeared with Whitmore, right? Seconds after the shooting. That sounded like Bob's voice. He's stronger than all of us put together. Yeah, there are times I'm afraid. Oh my god. Oh my dear god! Dad! Dad! Do you think he's alive? <laughs> Academy Award nominee! <laughs> no way! Come on! Oh, That's Jimmy my. Kimmel's sister, Julie Kimmel, right? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone seen The Incredibles? Have you seen The Incredibles? Like the, the, like the Pixar movie? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Didn't that lady look like Violet from The Incredibles? Oh, oh, the lady with the straight hair? Yeah, yeah. hair? That was totally her, based off <laughs> the, the lady in this film. This was the longest trailer in trailer history, by the way. <laughs> it's definitely a uh, emotional roller coaster for sure. <laughs> it really feels like it's three separate movies with no connection between them. There's the child with the karate, uh, there's the ghost dad, and somehow it's Christmas. <laughs> and none of these things overlap in any way. <laughs> You know, I have to I have to give props to some of the people in the uh, in the comments. I think Casey said it looked like a PowerPoint presentation when the words would come over, <laughs> which is totally true. And then Nick Coleman, who's a local filmmaker, he said, "How dare you guys leak my next product?" <laughs> uh, I had one more in here too. I think it was from Oh yeah, Jim. He says, "I've seen better acting in porn." <laughs> Same. It's true. It's Same. true. Yeah, they definitely use the Ken Burns effect of crossing in the photos and the text next to each other. I would watch that, honestly. It's so bad that I would watch it. Mm -hmm. I, it, I yeah, like how they, I, they showed karate like three different times and each time it was the exact same like punch over the head <laughs> and then like <laughs> fall down. It was the same move every time. That's what, that's what you got to know to be a black belt. You have to know those two moves and uh, it'll be all right. Hillary said it, it was a long trailer, but she still doesn't know what the movie's going to be about. <laughs> that's so true. Karate and Christmas. I like how they were like, he's getting stronger and he was doing push-ups yeah. on the floor. <laughs> Oh, I really liked when she clarified. He was like, oh, he gets his strength from his dad. Well, his physical strength. Do you guys see what Josh said? He said, it's like, ghost dad, karate, and Christmas, all my favorite subjects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a real trailer to a real, real film. Yeah, mm -hmm. several people asked if this was real in the comments. I mean, it's not like... A documentary, but it is definitely a real film that exists. Yeah, um, it, if you do want to watch it, it's uh, streaming for free on YouTube. You can watch the entire thing. <laughs> All right. Do you want to go? To your, do you want to go to your next clip? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, another trailer, um, still in the, the Christmas theme, but kind of a 180 from where where we were. Um, it's really just a trailer that lets everybody know that even. You know, creatures of the sea can be in the spirit. Uh, this is the trailer for Santa Jaws. 
Here we go. Can't believe you would do this on Christmas Eve. You're grounded. What? Tomorrow is the Christmas Eve comic book party. Oh, well, you should have thought of that before. You're better off without him. Isn't that right, Santa Jaws? Cody! Get a hat! That is not a shark! That is Santa Jaws! I know her! I made her! That is her! <laughs> What did, a bigger did, play. what did he say at the end? Oh, I, I didn't I didn't catch it. Oh, oh, like, oh, oh you <laughs> son of a fish. Oh, oh yes. Oh, you know somebody just did like rip like three lines of blow and was like Santa Jaws. Ah, I gotta call some people. <laughs> Put a hat on his fin. <laughs> Uh, I didn't. Can I see the last line again? I didn't even see that. Do you mind if we yeah, play it back? Run it back. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm playing it back. I'm gonna pull it Can't forward. Is he what? Is he what? Ho, 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 you son of a fish. Oh, shit, I talked about Yes! <laughs> ho, 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 you son of a fish. <laughs> oh, my, my. That is awesome. I need that as my ringtone. Felicia, <laughs> Felicia wants spirit, to know if that's a sure. Hallmark film. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The Karate Christmas Miracle could be, but <laughs> definitely not Santa Jaws. Oh, uh, so good. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, was there a Santa Jaws, uh, like, a, like a narwhal at one point? Or did he just have a sword? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he, uh, it's like a unicorn candy cane uh, <laughs> on his head, yes. Right on. You know what I really liked about that is Sam goes, was there like a was there like a shark narwhal, which is like totally out of left field, right? And then <laughs> and then Alex is like, no, 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 it was a candy cane. <laughs> 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 I also liked when he ate the one person at the beginning, right at the beginning of the trailer. And then you see the shark swimming through the water and it has the hat on the fin. And... <laughs> so good. It's so cute. I would, I would swim towards that shark instead of run away. How cute that is and how rare that is to see a shark with a tiny little hat that fits and it doesn't fall off in the water. It's yeah, amazing. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Um, by the way, Justine, you look amazing. Whatever you, whatever makeup you've been putting on lately, uh, is really bringing out the tone in your face. You look, you look awesome. You're glowing. <laughs> wow, thank you. I'd just like to thank the creators of this this uh, ring light. Um, <laughs> if you can see the rings in my eyes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I'm in like a music video. Yo, yo. <laughs> Where's P. Diddy? Where's Mace? I see this. <laughs> They're in the bathroom. Doing tons of blow, thinking about Santa Jaws 2. Right. Yeah, it's doing a lot of snow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to talk over you. Tina Jet says uh, it's a premiere. It's having a premiere on Hallmark. It's uh, It must be a Christmas mackerel. It must be a Christmas <laughs> mackerel. Ah, uh, miracle! I get it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Alex, Alex, thanks for bringing these to the table. They were fantastic. And um, Sam and Justine, I know you, we didn't have you on long, but thank you for being part of the show. Ah, Finn. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, you guys. We'll see you later on. Thank right. you so much. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I was thinking that was Macaro on Thirty Fourth Street. Oh. Yes. Nice. 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 Right. <laughs> I thought it was bold, though, um, you know, because we had kind of had a discussion beforehand, like, if you could say this word or not, but he, they made a movie called Santa Juice. 
Was Jaws. That, oh, it was Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> oh, I thought it was Jews. No. Santa and Jews. No. Oh, Santa Jaws. Okay, Santa like Santa Claus. That yes. makes more sense. Yes. Yes, it makes, it makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah, so, hey, thank you, Alex. Thank you to the Bad Flick Show. Yes. Every Wednesday night, right? Every Wednesday night on Until this year. Until the end of days. Yeah, yeah. You, Alex, you, you are, you're tasked with... Coming up with more clips every single time. Uh, I'm sure it gets easier. More like it's not gonna get harder. I was thinking this was gonna be a big challenge for Alex because almost every show there's a Turkish movie, and I'm like, finding a Turkish Christmas movie is gonna be a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah it's very good. They, I love Alex. Thank you so much. All right. So how about some more music? Yes, that is a staple of the holiday show. We need music. Yeah. So let's let's hear some more music. Yeah. You know, anything to put off your. Stop motion animation film. <laughs> uh, this is a, a feat of modern day cinema, okay? This stop motion uh, holiday special is, it's going to be right up there with all the holiday classics, Rudolph and uh, Santa Claus is coming to town and Wallace and Gromit stuff. Like, it's coming up later. You guys, you gotta stick around to watch this thing. I've worked so long. Okay. I've lost friends. I might lose more after it's done. We'll see. <laughs> We're going to throw it back to Brett and Jake. Jake's grandma's basement. Hi, Comedy Spot. Breaking, breaking Jet here. <laughs> breaking Jet. Breaking Jet here to sing you another holiday song. This one's a classic, and I bet you'll know the words to sing along. Brett, do your best to sing along, too, won't I'm you? I'm going to sing along. You know Dasher, and Dancer, and Prancer, and Vixen, Comet, and Cupid, and Donner, and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, reindeer. had a very shiny <laughs> Keep going! <laughs> Keep going! All of the other reindeer, reindeer used to laugh and call him names. <laughs> Keep going. That's what you get for saying Keep going. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer, reindeer had a very shiny nose. Like the light. And if you ever saw it, saw it. Say it glows like the light bulb. All of the other reindeer, reindeer used to laugh and call him names. Like the light bulb. They never let poor Rudolph, Rudolph join in any reindeer game. Like the light bulb. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer. Loved him, loved him as they shouted out with glee. Who loves the red nosed reindeer? reindeer? You'll go down in history. Like a then how the reindeer loved him, loved him as they shouted out with the light bulb. Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. reindeer. You'll go down in his story. Like a light bulb? Brett, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> like a light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> what a good bit. Oh, it is so good to see Jake Joyner again. It has been too long since he has moved away to the frigid Middle Mountain West. Um, <laughs> But, here's to you, Jake. Here's a special nog that I made. This is nog number three tonight, just so you know. Uh, this uh, nog is made by aging in a refrigerator, in a refrigerated place. And, you know, you, originally you would bury it, uh, but uh, I put it in the fridge. Uh, this has, of course, bourbon, uh, rum, uh, brandy, mm -hmm. whole grain alcohol, mm -hmm. lighter fluid, yeah. Mr. Clean. <laughs> yeah, I got that. And... 
little bit of juice from a tuna can. Yeah. I got a little hint of uh, PCP as well. Mm. Is that, mm. Am I tasting that right? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah. Call this that is angel getting dust. me fucked up. <laughs> I like, though, I do appreciate you brought a different vessel for each one of the nogs. Uh, this one has jingle bells on it. it yeah, says, it has I jingle bells written on it. It says eggnog. Uh, let me tell you, as a, as a nog sommelier, really knowing your glassware for particular nogs is very important. It can bring out different notes. I mean, this one has a little bit of a Vince Guaraldi going on, and mm -hmm. you have to just dress it up the right way. You can't just put it in any glass. Yeah, no, this, um, I, I took a whiff of it, and it immediately smelled like one of my grandparents, mm -hmm. which um, that's... That's a, a sentiment to their their drinking addiction. <laughs> it's it's what made Christmas special in our house. <laughs> Drunk grandparents. Speaking of special, yes. uh, what what can we say about comedy spot performer uh, Jack Brown that hasn't been said before? Um, that uh, he likes to keep his clothes on. <laughs> yeah, is, no one's ever said that. Yeah, no, 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 no one's, one's ever that. said that. But he. Um, He's kept his clothes on for this one. In mm -hmm. fact, he put on more clothes than I've ever seen him wear. <laughs> um, and he made a very delightful holiday video that he, he's willing to share with us. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit on what, what is happening with the mall Santas in this 2020 pandemic. Poor guys. So let's see what, uh, let's, see what's, let's check in with what's happening with mall Santas this year. The mall doesn't need a mall Santa this year. I do it every year, but not this one, because of the pandemic. Should have checked my email before getting all dressed up. Saved up vacation days to be Mall Santa, and I have to use them before the end of the year, but it doesn't feel like vacation. Things are different. I miss brightening someone's day. I miss connecting. I miss the Christmas spirit. I miss the camaraderie I used to have with my Christmas elf helper, Nikolai, but neither one of us are great texters. I miss the look of joy on a kid's face as they sit on my lap and ask for a gift. But there are no kids at Thunderland. No kids at the park either. You can't look too hard for kids or people get suspicious, and rightfully so, but it's not like that. I just miss the Christmas spirit. And any other rush is temporary. Morning McDonald's ice cream as a treat always cheers me up. But their ice cream machine's broken. No ice cream. Maybe I can get birds to sit in my lap. I know they're not humans, but they have wishes too. We all have wishes. Even me. These birds wish I was dead. Bread is filling, but it doesn't make your soul full like being a mall Santa. No one sat in my lap and I had to flee, so not a good idea. Shaken, I head to another McDonald's location. They have ice cream! But my lactose intolerance flares up. And my anger flares up. It's not fair that I can't be Mall Santa. Dang these restrictions. I head to the state capitol to deliver coal and raise hell. I'm gonna slap the governor. But I can't go through with it. I respect the law. No matter what suit I'm wearing, I'm a patriot at heart. A heart that is so empty. Perfunctory waves greet me instead of the usual hugs and Christmas wishes. Then even the waves stop. Without the mall, I am nothing. The eggnog takes its cumulative toll. Maybe I can get a train to come sit in my lap. Tell me what it wants for Christmas. No one else will. I bet you a train would want coal. That's a funny joke. I wish I could share it with my Christmas elf. Maybe I should just turn this vacation into a permanent vacation. After one more sip of nog. But the train takes too long. I drink. I black out. I come to. <laughs> I used to be a mall Santa. Now I've got no eggnog. No one to sit in my lap. 
<laughs> and no Christmas spirit. How about a little less no, 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 and a little more ho, ho, ho? Who said that? It's me, the real Santa. <laughs> I'm always watching. How else do you think I know who's naughty and who's nice? Now, crawl up in Santa's metaphysical lap and answer one question for me. What do you want for Christmas? No one's ever asked me that before. Did it work? Well, look in your lap. <laughs> wow! Eggnog in my oh, lap? Oh, oh, my Christmas oh, oh, spirit is back! Yes, now, now dance. Dance for Santa! <laughs> okay. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, dance that tight little booty around. Oh, baby. Oh, baby with a butt so tight. You could guide my sleigh tonight. Shake it like you want to sell it. Oh, sell it so you can buy those hair combs for your wife. Oh, damn, Christmas irony is so sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Jack, thank you so much uh, for uh, looking inward on what's happening with the Mall Santas. No one really is appreciating them right now. Um, also, Kevin Cooley makes the best, creepiest Santa Claus <laughs> ever. Shout out to him. Um, and shout out to uh, uh, Sarah Colbum. Happy birthday. It is your birthday tonight. So hopefully uh, Jack is doing something special for you that's Nog related and he kept, uh, maybe he doesn't keep his clothes on, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Hot. Uh, speaking of hot, uh, Greg Saban, super hot dude. Uh, his mom even thinks so. She mentioned in the comments that he's doing a great job. And I agree. I think he's doing such a great job. He's actually, um, he's uh, pivoted real quick. He's gone into our live studio and he's about to um, serenade us with some of his mus musician buddies. Now, we've had a lot of levity. You just watched Jack Brown's videos, very funny. All the bits tonight have been very, very funny, but it is the holidays, and sometimes the holidays we need um, you know, a little bit of heart and warmth. And so he's performing with his, uh, his group, the Free Badge Serenaders, who are a staple of the uh, holiday show from the Comedy Spot. And they're gonna actually do something for us that's a little bit uh, different than what we've seen tonight. It's, a, it's pretty. It's, he's done a very pretty, pretty Christmas song for us. So uh, Greg, take it away with your band.
Happy holidays, everybody. It's your buddy, Kevin. As most of you know, to varying degrees, I love you all. So I wanted to give you a bit of a warning. Uh, if you are in a relationship and you don't want it to get weird, please beware of Burl Ives. See, in 1964, Burl Ives released a song called Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. It's very influential. It's charting still to this day. And in it, he instructs people, Oh ho, the mistletoe, hung where you can see, somebody waits for you, kiss her once for me. Yeah. Yeah, people are going home, passionately kissing their significant others, sometimes with tongue, looking them in the eyes and saying, that was from Burl Ives. Ew. Just, ew. And, oh, 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 okay, I, yeah, I get it, yeah. The chances of this happening to you are pretty slim, but all I'm saying, if your partner should come home and want to immediately kiss you, just stall. Just buy yourself some time, get a cooling off period going. That's all I'm saying, okay? Better safe than sorry. That's it, happy holidays, love you all. That's from Burl, and oh, oh, I'm so sorry! Kevin, thank you very much. Wise words there from Kevin Cooley. Stay aware of a loved one's pucker. Okay, uh, I'm just, I, it was just an intense musical experience for me. So I'm just, if I'm a little bit, you know, verklempt. Uh, Greg, yeah, can you come to me for a second? Every dog that was listening to that went crazy. There were several dogs and cats that are going crazy throughout the United States right now because of that video. Christmas, the holidays, they're for everyone, not just two leggeds, um, but also the four-legged friends. So I hope your 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 pooches and, uh, and kitties and, and other high-eared creatures uh, are uh, enjoying the show tonight. Uh, a special guest right now. I'd like to uh, really introduce a, a very special. This is more of an informative kind of thinking about what are we going to be giving each other for gifts. It's a tough year for shopping. Uh, live in the studio, we have a guest, a spokesperson uh, from Bath and Body Works, Terry, ladies and gentlemen. Terry from Bath and Body Works. Hey, y'all. How's it going? Gregory, thank you so much for that introduction. Thanks for having me. Uh, usually I'm the one saying welcome because uh, I work, I'm a greeter at Bath and Body Works saying yeah. welcome, welcome, but you welcome me this time. So that's different for me. Yes, I would. So, well, welcome to you. Yes, let's return the favor. I'm so excited to have somebody here who's an expert in both bath and body working. Yes, uh, you know, this is a very weird season for everybody. We can all agree on that. Uh, uh, a lot of us, we're not going to be able to see our loved ones this time of year because of the Rona and because of the virus and all that good <laughs> stuff. So um, it's really hard to not be able to see your family members uh, during the holidays. But uh, Bath and Body Works has got you covered, <laughs> okay? Uh, so we have created ourselves a line. Uh, we're known, Greg, you know, for our three wick candles, baby. Woo woo! <laughs> Everybody lines up at the door trying to get themselves some of these three wick candles. And so we came out with a line of scented candles that smell like your family members. <laughs> okay? Your family members? Yes, sir. Your, oh, okay. Like, you know, in general, in general family members or, or specific family members? I mean, we, uh, we, we got about. 18 different candles that smell like sugar cookies. So we've been able to go ahead and craft very specific family members for you, okay? We got a lab working out here uh, in the Netherlands, okay? There's a lab out there. They work tirelessly. We call them smell scientists is what we call them. <laughs> and what we did is we got them early on. We knew that this Rona is gonna take over the holidays. So they've been working tirelessly trying to come up with smells that are distinct to the family members that you'll be missing this holiday season. <laughs> okay, let's just dive into it. Huh? All right, I can't wait to hear because, uh, trust me, I don't know what to buy for anybody this year. Everybody's stuck at home, right? Yeah, right. And this, these are these are gifts you're going to buy yourself, Gregory. Oh, because these great. Are, you're going to be missing your family so much that you're going to want to smell them. You can't see them, so you might as well you might as smell <laughs> you might as smell want to smell them. Is what you're going to want to do. Okay. So yeah. let's bust out our first one here. Okay. This is a, this is a, a classic one first. Okay. This is Grandma, right here. Mm -hmm. We got we got the the Grandma candle. There's a there's a bunch of different types. But this specific type here, uh, this one uh, has aromas of hairspray, mm -hmm. 
Uh, the perfume section of a Ross. Okay. Your local Ross. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, all the smells that you would get from that, from your local Ross. Uh, lipstick on the teeth. Okay, so we, our scientists went ahead and they figured out the exact odor of a teeth and then also of a lipstick and those two things together. So they blend. It's a blend. That's, that's impressive. I would never have thought uh, that, that lipstick on the teeth have a specific odor. Yeah, and then to finish it off, there's just a hint, a very a hint of uh, judgmental glares, mm. which comes from grandma. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that seems like it would cover a pretty wide swath of people. Yes, I, I, we, I think we really harness the essence of grandma smell, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is what we do here. Okay. Nice, very nice. Um, All right, what else have you got? If you don't have a grandma in your life and you're not going to be missing grandma this year, we got, uh, we got the creepy uncle smell. Okay, mm. I think we all can appreciate a creepy uncle on the holidays showing up. Some of, us, some of us are that creepy uncle. Yep, and there's a little bit of Greg in this one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Our scientists, he, that we had, and I just took a little bit of his skin sales right out, <laughs> right out the nape of his neck, okay? I got him. All right, so, but along with the smell of Greg, <laughs> we also have in here, I have notes that I have here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's gin, mm. which is a, a, a very familiar odor from the uncles. Uh, we also have lottery tickets, mm -hmm. <laughs> the smell of lottery tickets, you know, the little, when you get the, the paper ones, but also the ones you scratch off. Oh, scratches. sure. Oh, yeah. That's a very, that's a very reminiscent smell of childhood, for sure. Yes. Yeah. From the creepy uncle. There's mm -hmm. also Chef Boyardee raviolis. Okay. Mm -hmm. We just went ahead and we just took a whole ravioli, put it right in the pot there to get the, the Beautiful. E essence. Beautiful. And then also with a creepy uncle, you got to put a little bit of mouthwash. Okay. Because he's trying to hide that gin, but he's not doing a good job, Gregory. Don't even start with me. Okay. okay? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, so a creepy uncle, Chef Boyardee, gin, mouthwash. Yeah, funny, funny fact. I don't know if you knew this. Chef Boyardee, real person. Real person. Yep, and he donated some of his semens to, oh. uh, to put right on that creepy uncle. Lovely. <laughs> okay. Lovely. It was very nice. They have all that in, in, in the Netherlands. They got all the, the vials of every smell that you would need, including Chef Boyardee semen. Well, they're the experts. Uh, we also have, you know, if you're going to be missing your little... Your little tax, your little tots and tax that you're not going to be seen this year, okay? We have a, the little nephew scent, okay? Your little shitty nephew. They won't shut the fuck up, okay? We got a smell for him, too. Okay, so this is uh, the essence of peanut butter, because that, that little bastard's got sticky peanut butter hands all the time. Uh, crayons, because he thinks he's an artist. That, that, little, that little guy can't stay within the lines to save his life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's ADD medication. Okay, <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, we got yes. that, a hint of that. Yep. And then we also have the essence of a dirty Xbox controller. Okay, mm. so if you ever smell the dirty... Gregory, have you ever smelled a dirty Xbox controller? Well, I mean, I've smelled a dirty PlayStation controller. I can't imagine it being much different. Oh, there's a difference, Greg. Okay, oh, we have that oh. specifically too. You guys are so specific with your sense. That's amazing. Yeah, talk to my, talk to the scientists, okay? I'm mm -hmm. just I'm just the face of Bath and Body Works, okay? I'm just the one here pitching this shit. Uh, okay. Oh, also we have your sister's boyfriend, mm. okay? You know when your sister brings that different boyfriend every year, boyfriend? right? Every well, year. There's a very uh, interesting fact: the sister boyfriend smell always smells the same. It is a smell of Axe body spray mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. also weed, okay? <laughs> so that's it. It's just those two ingredients. It's a very simple one, okay? We got that on sale. Uh, Bye. Buy three at regular price, which is $69.99, and you get two for regular price also. So that's a deal for you. So wait, one more time. Three for regular price. Three for, if you buy three at regular that's price. That's nine wicks, by the way, everybody. Nine wicks. Yeah. Then you get two at regular price. Okay. So we're doing deals here. We're doing deals left and right. Got it. Hey, Greg, do you have, do you have that cousin that does CrossFit? Well, sure. I mean, doesn't everybody? Yeah, of course. They all do. But there's a very special odor that comes with that, okay? Sure. So that's protein powder. Mm -hmm. Got that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you got sweat, okay, mm -hmm. which comes with that. And then we also, our scientists are so specific. They harnessed the words of somebody saying, is it paleo? That's what they did. <laughs> they, they harnessed the scent of somebody saying, is it paleo? Yeah. They went ahead and they did that for us, okay? So they're really on top of their game in the Netherlands. Is there nothing they can't do? That's, that's amazing. <laughs> I thought, how are they going to get that specific scent of sanctimony of the CrossFitter in there? Exactly. But they did it. And you know what? They didn't also do, just do that. They went ahead and they got uh, your mom's friend who has no one else to go to a holiday party. Oh, very okay, specific, always, yeah. 
Everyone always has mom's friend mm -hmm. who has no family sure. or free, other friends. You grew up. Family. You grew up having to call her auntie, even though she yes, wasn't your exactly. aunt. Yeah. So we went ahead and we made a candle just for that. It's always that awkward uh, middle-aged woman who's at the the holiday party who no one knows her name. Mm -hmm. I just kind of feel bad for. Her. So, but the the. The scents in there are Chardonnay from a coffee mug, <laughs> okay, specifically from a coffee mug. <laughs> the scent of an online college brochure. <laughs> That's who they are. That's <laughs> specific. That is very specific. And of course, cat piss. And that's the sure. final ingredient in that one, mm. is cat piss. Because you need all three of those to merely make it mom's friend who had nowhere else to go oh. on the holidays. You know what? And along with that, there's a very similar candle. This is a recently divorced aunt. Mm. It's actually the same smell, oh. but you add a little bit of weed. So that's the different part in that, too. Gotcha. So we went ahead and we put uh, sister's boyfriend, we put mom's friend who's got nowhere else to go, and we put those two together. And that's how we make uh, aunt who's recently divorced. That sounds great. <laughs> that's very good. Um, you know, we, we, do, we do dads, we do moms. You know, we got a line of dads that's just socks and sandal smell. Mm. The smell of a socks and sandal. Mm -hmm. We got mom that's freshly baked bread, but also some Valium. So those two scents, nice. you know, we got a whole line of those. And our very last candle that we got here, Greg, and I can't wait to show it for you. Can't wait. Very special one. So holiday dinner, that's what you're going to be missing. Oh, all these yes. Folks, oh, all yes. These missing going to miss the holiday sitting dinner. Sitting around the table. They, you know, they're all trying to like converse, converse, converse. Mm -hmm. And then it always goes to shit. So what we did here is the very first half of the candle is sweet and savory scents. And nice. About halfway through, uh -huh. it's just a layer of shit. It's mm. just feces from our scientists or for whoever was willing to donate, okay? Because that's how the holiday dinner goes. In the Netherlands. It starts sweet, savory, it always halfway through goes to shit, okay? <laughs> but then we finish it off with some eggnog brandy at the very bottom. Because uh. that is the true meaning of Christmas. We can fight politics, all that stuff, but at the end of the day, we're sipping eggnog brandy, we start hugging, but not this year. So we got candles for you instead of seeing your family. Stay safe, wear your masks. We love you at Bath and Body Works. Look out for our BOGO deal coming January 1st, where you can buy one candle and get the other one for the exact same price. That's great. <laughs> thank you very much, Greg. Oh, really appreciate you. Terry, thank you so much. That's Terry from Bath and Body Works. Thank you so much, Terry. Again, remember those deals. That's one for one, that's two for two, and then if you got three, you can get two more for two. So uh, really some great deals at the Bath and Body Works. It's, it's an amazing organization, experts in bath and bodies. So uh, we want to turn this over to one of our favorite people, Marco Cabote. That's right, Marco Cabote. Many Sacramento Comedy Spot fans know Marco's work very well. Well, Marco is uh, a sketch comedian of, and, and writer of some renown. Uh, this uh, Christmas season, he's making a little bit of a diversion into his musical side. So uh, his new Pretty, pretty hardcore music, hardcore rock and roll project put out a Christmas song of their own. Take a look.
<laughs> yeah, brother. That, that's a new rockin' Christmas jam from Marco Cabote. Look out, Mariah Carey. This might be the new holiday sensation that we're about to see. Uh, it is so funny. <laughs> And it's not catchy so much as like annoying. I don't know what the how you would Brian. How would you describe that tune? Ah, uh, eighties. Yeah, definitely eighties. 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 Super funny, hilarious. If you don't get a record deal from that, Marco, I don't know what to tell you. I just don't. Um, okay, we're chugging right along here. Uh, we got some uh, a few more things for you. Uh, we have the uh, animated holiday special that'll be coming up from yours truly. Uh, but first, our own Greg Saban. He is a beautiful musician. Uh, you saw him earlier with his band uh, Free, Free Badge Serenaders. But uh, now he's with the Owl Brothers and um, a, a bass player, I believe. And they're going to do another holiday favorite for you tonight. Okay, so he's in the live studio. Uh, Greg, go ahead and uh, let, let's kick off this holiday song. Thank you very much, Chris. This oh, is a special event nice. right now. This is a it's live, nice. simulcast, satellite, musical extravaganza. We've got Katie Cabrera on the bass, all the way from Los Angeles. Nice to see you. We've got all the way from Carmichael, the Owl Brothers, Brandon and Justin Owl. This is going to be okay. exciting. We're going to do a Christmas song for you oh, about boy. Santa Claus. That's right, Santa Claus. You've heard I'm of ready. him. Uh, you might not know he is actually one of the world's greatest contact tracers. All right, this is a little bit about that. Now you better stay put, you better stay home, you better eat it, you better not run. Santa Claus is coming to town. Oh, don't board a plane, just stay in your room. Great, that was fantastic. Greg, thank you so much, sir. Uh, that's some festive songing and singing right there. Um, next, we have coming up, we solicited uh, the Comedy Spot community for some holiday greetings. Uh, we got some very special uh, videos from everyone and we went ahead and put them together and we're gonna show them for you now. And it's a, an appreciation, not just for all the supporters and the patrons that we have, but the community as a whole. And it's a very special message from all of us at the Comedy Spot. Hi everyone, this is Sarah, and on behalf of the Sacramento Comedy Spot Board and the Hypothetics, I just wanted to wish you all a happy and healthy holiday season. Thank you for sticking it out with us. It makes it all worthwhile. And I, for one, am looking forward to kicking 2020 to the curb and hopefully seeing all of your faces in 2021. Thank you for your support. Take care, be safe, and see you next year. Hey, just wanted to say happy holidays to everybody watching out there tonight. Uh, your support has really meant a lot to us this year, and we'll see you all in 2021. 
Hello, everybody. I just wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Or even if you celebrate Hanukkah, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, whatever it is that you celebrate, I wish it well to you. And I hope you guys all have a Happy New Year, a better New Year. And that's coming from my heart. Um, I can't wait to see everybody next year. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. Love you all. See you next year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Happy Happy Holidays. Happy Valentine's. To the entire, the entire comedy spot community from the Lemke. And we have a special guest here with us right now. And we got a guest right now. What? What? <laughs> hey! Happy holidays from me and mine to you and yours. Happy, Happy holidays! holidays. <laughs> Happy, Happy holidays. holidays! Hi, happy holidays. I super miss going to the comedy spot every week and performing there, but... 2021. Happy holidays. <laughs> cute dog content. Oh, two cute dogs. Sorry. Bye. Hi, Santa. It's us. So, um, we just really wanted to ask you. Are you pregnant? We really want a little brother. We hope that you're pregnant. We really, really want a little brother. Please, please Santa yes. Emery. Please, Santa Emery. Mrs. Claus of Grey Man. Oh, you better watch out. 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 Merry Christmas, darling. I just sent fruitcake. Okay, that was left over from Halloween. Woof. Merry Christmas from all of us. 2020. Merry Christmas. And happy holidays. From us. Marco. Maiden. And, and Bella the Cat. And there's another one. Amazing. Lovely. Yeah, that's just that's just so wonderful. It's so good to see everybody who we've not been able to see all year long. Um, but, uh, you know, one more uh, shout out and a, and a happy holidays and a, and a thank you, a very, very sincere thank you to Brian Crawl. Yeah. Um, the, the comedy spot here has been, as you know, has been literally doors closed for almost all year. And uh, Brian has had to recreate what the comedy spot is, what it means to us, what we can do, and um, he has learned new skills <laughs> and uh, reinvented uh, himself from a, a theater guy to a tech guy. Yeah. Uh, and it's just it, utterly amazing the amount of work and stress and the, the amount of stress that he carries for everybody else. Um, it, so many thanks. Yeah, take a drink uh, if you've gotten a late night uh, stress message from Brian stressing about something. Um, <laughs> It's real. He uh, he's literally wakes up and thinks about the comedy spot. He goes to bed thinking about the comedy spot, and he's put uh, blood, sweat, and tears into it. Uh, he's the reason that we're still here right now yeah. doing this for you. Uh, he's worked tirelessly on the the tech stuff. It's very stressful. He's not just throwing pens because he's a jerk. No. Okay, <laughs> he's a jerk, but that's not why he's throwing pens. He's throwing pens because he's so stressed out. You know, trying to keep this thing afloat, and so. He, like Greg said, a huge thank you to Brian uh, and to the community, and uh, I just want everyone to. So many, I mean, so many of us have worked from home this whole time, and and have actually gotten closer to our families. Brian has barely seen his family. <laughs> he has been here at the Comedy Spot, making it better, uh, making it so ready to go as soon as things are ready to go. It's yeah. it's really amazing. I love um, you, Brian. Thank you for everything that you do. Love you, Brian. Uh, if you, we could turn on the Brian cry cam, yeah, that'd, that'd be there, really great right now. Is there any Brian? The crying, the cry cam. <laughs> would be really fantastic. <laughs> yes. Now we got a show. You, uh, you two, um, I can't thank you enough for putting all this together. I've been crying the whole time. <laughs> 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 oh, 
All oh, right. That's it. So everybody, raise a glass. Raise a glass. Raise a glass. As they say in the Christmas Carol to the founder of the feast. Yes. <laughs> raise a glass to Brian Crawl and take a sip. Oh, mm. great. oh, that's that's vile. That's our last nog of the night. Oh, we lost Greg in the in the shot. Oh, it's all right. Brian's tears shorted out the Short, system. Shorted out my camera. Don't That's all right. Don't cry over the Did we run out of juice on that camera? What happened? Oh, no. I think, uh, I think uh, your camera just went out. Oh. Oh, it's all right. Uh, it's just you. Um, yeah, we'll get a... We'll get, we'll get a he's got a whole slew of batteries right here. He, oh, fantastic. He's, he's, Brian's literally crying over himself. So much. He, his, his battery's slipping out of his hands. <laughs> <laughs> tears. Uh, the saltiness. I can smell, you know, someone, I saw someone ask earlier, we had that really great guest that yeah, came from fantastic. the Bath and Body Works. Right. Um, they asked, is there a Brian candle? And yes, it's just tears. Just tears. The smell, the of, smell tears. of tears. If, a little salty, can, a little sad. Yeah, they can harness that. Uh-huh. Uh, well, Chris, you know, you, they can't see me right now, but I, they can hear me. And uh, what you're drinking right now is uh, a nog, that, uh, an eggnog that has neither eggs nor dairy in it. It's a soy nog for our vegan friends. And I okay. thought, what liquor is going to go uh, just just great with a soy nog? And I thought, gin. So uh, oh. soy nog and gin. I, for the sake of the bit, I want to be more disgusted. <laughs> but I'm a gin boy. Through oh, God. Through. That creepy uncle candle, like, that's me, baby. That gin. So I actually am enjoying it over here. It tastes like a, like a pine branch rubbed through some lemon soap. You know, Ooh. like, yes, mm. it's kind of like I got a bit of an orange Julius follow. <laughs> okay, I'm really not digging. You're right. After I drink it more, you're right. it does actually <laughs> gross me out. A bit. I thought I could, I could power through, but it is pretty gross. Throw it to our next movie review, Chris. Yes, uh, this is our last uh, comedian that we um, asked to do a, a, a review of a holiday movie. Um, let's see what Robert Amato has to say about his holiday movie. What's up, Sacramento Comedy Spot? I'm supposed to talk to you about a holiday movie I either love or hate. And I don't know why I'm holding a Sharpie because I didn't even use this pen. But I feel like it makes, like an accentuates my point and it makes it feel like I did research, which I didn't. But I'm going to say 2013 came out. It's called Bad Santa starring Billy Bob Thornton. He plays a character called Willie T. Stokes, him and his partner. Every year they have a holiday con. And this year they're robbing a mall. Okay, but the problem is Billy Bob Thornton at this point is an alcoholic and depressed. And it's just hilarious to see a, a drunk Santa who doesn't care. And one scene, he's coming up the escalator completely blacked out and passed out drunk on an escalator, gets up and punches a reindeer. Like, what more can you ask for in a movie? Okay, uh, and just seeing a drunk Santa annoyed interacting with kids is exactly how I picture, like, I would do that job because you're getting paid minimum wage. Right? I don't know how much Santa's get paid, but I can't be a ton. So you're sitting there with these kids who are asking for things that they don't deserve because they, you know, they said they've been good, but they're lying, right? And they're asking for things way out of their parents' price range. And uh, so it's just him interacting with kids and saying the things that you really want to say. He befriends another kid and stays in his house. You think he's being helpful, but he's really just using them for the liquor, the free stay, and uh, ends up helping him you know, get through a bully situation. I think he hits a kid with a skateboard. I'm not sure about that. I might be making that up in my head, but I, I, I think he hits a kid with a skateboard at one point, which by itself would be alone, you know, just a reason to see the movie. Play it if your parents or whoever you're around doesn't like seeing anything over PG-13 because the look on their faces will be worth it alone. All right, check it out. Bad Santa starring Billy Bob Thornton. Oh, so we, um, Greg is trying to do a bit outside, um, but we just lost him. It just dropped. Um, so uh, are we going to be able to get him in here? He's not, uh, he's not. It's not going to happen? That's fine. Yeah, um, I know what is happening next. Uh, we have uh, one last musical act for you tonight. This is uh, Peter Petty. He is a uh, phenomenal musician from the, uh, from the area. And he has a, first of all, a very special message to, to give to everybody. And then he's got a phenomenal performance from one of his, his last year's live gigs that we don't get to do live gigs right now. So <laughs> this is a look at what happened last year and what you're missing out on this year. So uh, take it away, Peter. My nuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. 
Hey everybody, Peter Petty here, just saying I'm so sorry we can't be together for the holidays this year, but I want to invite you all to my next post-COVID show. That's December 18th, 2021 at the Sophia Theater in Sacramento, California. And until then, I hope you enjoyed last year's rendition of Backdoor Sarah. Happy holidays, everybody. Nobody puts on a show like Peter Petty, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no. What's that? Uh, what's that Sean Connery movie where he's wearing like a red, uh, uh, like like bikini? Oh, with is that like Zardos or something like that? Yeah, that's or Zenos? I'm sure Marco so much knows. Hair coming from uh, all over the place. So it's a fantastic, a fantastic performer. 
Uh, if, uh, when, again, when things open up, every time you get a chance to go see a live performance on stage, when you get a chance to go see live music, when you get a chance to eat out at a restaurant, take it, every opportunity. Let's make the rest of the 20s the roaring 20s. That's all I can say. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's yeah, good, I mean, good. we, Chris, this has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, well, it's, it's not been, over yet. It's been a Greg, lot of no. fun. I've really enjoyed it. Greg, and we can't wrap it up just quite yet, okay? We can't wrap, Brian, don't. Credits, can you We credits? have um, still the premiere of the Sacramento No, let me, no, don't end it. Okay, okay. We have to show, I've worked too long and too hard on this. Uh, it's thousands of dollars have gone in the production of the Sacramento Comedy Spot Stop Motion Animated Holiday Special, oh, okay? Boy. And we're gonna show it right now for the people at home. Okay. So uh, grab your family, grab your nog, and get ready to have the holiday spirit fill all of your holes. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? Wow. Pretty friggin' good. Wow. How how long did that take you? Uh, weeks. Uh, well, is if is eight weeks two months? So two months. Uh huh. Two uh -huh. months. Yeah. Uh, I put about twenty six hundred dollars into it. Uh, really, just staying up late, late nights, uh -huh. working, uh, working long and hard on it. And I think that the proof is in the pudding. It has some quality stop motion animation right that, there. Yeah, it was a quality 15 seconds of stop motion. What was that? We've been waiting for this the whole show. You've been talking it up. Come on, man. Greg, do you have any fucking idea how hard it is to do stop motion? Okay? It, each, each shot takes about a day and a half to set up. Okay? If you're doing it quality, like that was quality, okay? Quality. Qu was that tape you put on their eyes? No, it wasn't tape. That, that's post-production magic, okay? That's, uh, that's animation, all right? Have you, have you not seen any, uh, any holiday specials, stop motion, okay? Oh, that sure. That is right up there on, in the echelon uh -huh. of uh, uh, Santa Claus Coming to Town, uh -huh. uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh -huh. Wallace and Gromit. Uh -huh. Some kid playing with his Legos, and... I can't that. even. What, what was that? I can't even do it right now. I don't know if it's the nog that's like making me rage out right now, but I am disgust. It is hard to do stop motion, brah. Okay, so you, you <laughs> I'd like to see you do better. Is <laughs> all I gotta say to you. Do better next time, huh? Next. All right, year. next year. That's my challenge. I want to see yours. Stop motion on me next year. We'll do I it. I really liked it. I don't know about anybody else. But Thank I, you, Brian. I thought it was wonderful. Thank you. It really told a message of Christmas spirit. It was the miraculous uh -huh. Christmas miracle, okay? Right. Sure. It, it used the word miracle in two different forms right. in the title, uh -huh. okay? So that's yeah. how, it was, a, it was a miracle I was able to finish it at all, okay? <laughs> that I was ha finished? <laughs> okay, maybe he doesn't get to finish saying Christmas. Okay, because right, no. I ran out of time <laughs> and resources. <laughs> but we know now what, we knew what he was going to say. It was implied, okay? It's, it's leaving the rest to the imagination of the audience. Okay? I still feel that could have been like a one-panel cartoon. Okay, well, you're a one-panel cartoon. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, we can't, we can't end on a negative note where there is strife. No, it's the holidays. Hosts. It's the holidays. Damn it. And uh, every year... We end the Comedy Spot holiday show with a sing-along. Now, it's a little hard to do a sing-along when there's no audience here to sing along. But if you, if you use your imagination really hard and imagine that every 
We still got, uh, what, 25 people left that are watching us? More. Yeah, maybe? 73. Okay. All right. Thanks for those of you that have stuck it out. Uh, every single person that is watching with you right now is going to be singing along with you, and I want you to hear their voices in your ears. We're going to do an old Christmas favorite, and I think um, if you can sing along with me and have yourself a good time, sing with whoever's in your house right now and with your dogs. This probably won't set off your dogs nearly as bad as the other song, but uh, let's do Winter Wonderland. Winter Wonderland, uh, beautiful. Winter Wonderland, I'll sing it once and then everybody together, how about that? I love it. Yeah. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away, is that bluebird here to stay? Is the new bird, he sings a love song as we go along, walking in a winter wonderland. In the meadow we can build a snowman and pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, oh, are you married? We'll say, no man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, like a light bulb, we'll conspire as we dream by the fire we'll stay unafraid the plans that we made walking in a winter wonderland all right everybody are we ready are yep, we ready everyone sing okay. at home sing a long time record yourself singing yeah record yourself singing please send it to us put your phones on record now we'll wait <laughs> look up the lyrics if you need to yep i wish that i had all right we're gonna start with sleigh bells ring you ready yeah one two a one, two sleigh bells ring. Sleigh bell. Are you listening? In the lane. In the lane. Snow, snow is glistening. Be beautiful sight. Like, 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 happy tonight. Walking in a winds of wonderland. <laughs> oh, so they're doing all the work. Okay. <laughs> Walking in a winter wonderland. wonderland. Everybody! In the meadow we can build a snowman. And pretend that he is Parson Brown. He'll say, are you married? We'll say, no, man. But you can do the job when you're in town. Later on, we'll inspire as we dream by the fire. We'll say, unafraid, the plans that we made. Walking in a winter wonderland. One more time. We'll say, unafraid, the plans that we made. Walking in a winter wonderland. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. We love everyone. Love you.